Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Rachel Varga. I'm a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist and you're either listening on the Rachel Varga podcast or you're watching on my YouTube channel. I have a very lovely guest today. We have the very beautiful Cynthia Thurlow and we've had a chance to connect a number of times in person and every time I see you I'm just like, oh, who is this beautiful beautiful woman. You just radiate light from the inside and out. So Cynthia is a nurse practitioner, functional nutritionist, and two times TEDx speaker. Her passion is helping women find wellness through healing power of nutrition and solving health problems from the inside out. Very much in alignment to uh, my approach as well. What you're most proud of, what Cynthia is most proud of are her titles as a mom and a wife. She has a family of all boys, including two doodles and a lovely patient and supportive husband. So Cynthia, I've been seeing you everywhere. You are on the news, you're, you're absolutely everywhere. So I really wanna commend you for really showing up and spreading just wonderful healing messages, especially talking about diet and, and just how we can be our most vibrant, beautiful, and lightest versions of ourselves. So thank you so much for joining us today, Cynthia. Thanks so much for having me. It's really an honor and a privilege to be able to connect with you and your listeners, um, and, and certainly visually as well. Mm -hmm. So you've been making some pretty cool media appearances and spreading your message in a big way. So where have people been seeing you lately? I just really want to share where people can also find you after this too. Well, I, I would say pro probably given the, the amount of views, probably a viral TED talk from last year on intermittent fasting and women. Um, but I've also been a regular contributor to our local ABC affiliate in Washington, DC. Uh, as well as uh, out uh, in LA on KTLA and then in New York on WPIX and also Fox 5. And then I've been in um, a lot of print media, which has been really exciting to have collaborations with really talented writers. Uh, our podcast was actually written up in Entrepreneur Magazine at the end of the year, which was really exciting. And then also having a spot in Medium. So very, very grateful. I sit in tremendous gratitude to have had the opportunity to, you know, really be exposed to many, many people all over social media and, and regular print and visual media. Um, and then, you know, actually having met you last summer um, at Mindshare was really a privilege. And, you know, it, I think it's interesting, you know, as nurses and as women to have the opportunity to take our voices to higher platforms. You know, I appreciate when I've been able to speak at, uh, you, know, um, you know, kind of medical conferences, nursing conferences, but I, I think our message is one that, um, you know, really needs to be shared in a broader scale. And I think a lot of people that work in the medical community, medical community tend to be very introverted and kind of quiet. And so big shoes to fill when you're stepping into, you know, more traditional kind of paradigms and, and media outlets, um, if you're an introvert like I am. Um, definitely has been a fair, a really just incredible experience. And as I said, I just sit in complete gratitude and actually in awe uh, because things seem to have kind of fallen into place effortlessly. You know, there are no coincidences in life. And I know Jen Gottlieb, who is a friend of both of ours, always says, you know, you can connect the dots when you're looking backwards, even though they don't really seem to make sense at the time. When we look back at our lives, it all makes sense. You know, it all makes sense why our journeys have gotten us to where we are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just sharing so much helpful information at this time to people all over North America and beyond. Mm -hmm. And congratulations for having achieved what you've achieved, but it's because you're helping people. And mm -hmm. I feel like people that are on a mission to help people, it all comes back around. And when I see you, you know, you actually really inspire me because Thank you, you <laughs> have stepped away from traditional nursing, you know, much like I did as well. Mm -hmm. And you really found things that fulfill you and light you up and you mm -hmm. love sharing, you know, share, right. Sharing is caring. Let's just use the cliche, yeah. but you know, I think it's great. So what your work is really allowing you to be just lit up. And I see mm -hmm. that in your, in your radiance. So mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about sort of what lights you up and what you think radiance is all about. Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I would say for many years, my answer would have been 
the intellectual rigor of being an ER nurse, the intellectual rigor of being a cardiology nurse practitioner for 16 years. But I think once I became a parent, my life shifted in so many ways. I had a child with life-threatening food allergies. And so that dove me down a rabbit hole of trying to determine beyond just treating his symptoms, why that had happened. And that really started what has become where I am today. I read a book by Robin O'Brien called The Unhealthy Truth. And mm -hmm. it was a book that honestly changed my life. It made me very angry to read it uh, because I, like many consumers, I assumed everything that was available to us to eat was healthy and safe and we recognize it's not. And so diving down that rabbit hole, trying to get answers for my son, really shifted my perspective. And, and let's be clear, there's a, there's a room and place for Western medicine. I'm not in any way saying that's not the case, but in many ways, the way that we choose to live our lives and the way that we choose to eat our food uh, has a larger impact than oftentimes pharmaceutical agents on prevention and chronic disease management. So I definitely reached a point where I got tired of writing prescriptions, which is what I usually say. Uh, and I, over the course of time, I had started a doctoral program that mm -hmm. didn't feel right. I had done a wellness coaching certification and that was fine, but that didn't really light me up. And then I dove into a, a functional nutrition program and that really lit me up and that validated for me that there was a place for me. And there were many Western medicine trained providers in my program, which was also very validating. Is that amazing? And, All of these mm -hmm. forward thinking Western medicine physicians are mm -hmm. making the switch into functional medicine. It was just yeah. so cool. Yeah. And so I think, I think for many of us, it was, we were starting to see maybe this isn't the be all end all just writing scripts. There has to be more to it. And so I took a leap of faith four years ago and left clinical cardiology and I loved the heart and I loved my patients and really enjoyed many of the people that I worked with, but I felt a higher calling. And so what lights me up now is helping people in different ways. And I recognize that nurses are trained to be educators. That mm -hmm. is our primary nurture, nurturing, compassionate educators. And I am still very much in that role, but I'm in a role now where I have a whole lot more flexibility about how I spend my time doing it. And so from pivoting away from clinical medicine, I spent a great deal of time creating programs and, and creating one-on-one -on -one programs as well, group programs and one-on-ones to help support women, uh, ironically in middle age and beyond. Uh, I always say it's, you know, surviving to thriving, but, you know, latter part of thirties heading into their forties, fifties and beyond. And I consistently had women that were coming to me with the same symptoms. They were tired. They were gaining weight. Mm. They had, uh, you know, food sensitivities. They had no energy. They had lost their inner goddess, if you will. Right. So having the opportunity and the privilege to be able to help people find that person that they used to be and evolve, shift, and change. Like I always say, none of us are static organisms. We are meant to evolve, shift, and change throughout our lifetime and helping them understand why we have to make changes to our diet and the way that we take care of ourselves and all of those things. And it's incredibly gratifying to know that there are hundreds and hundreds of women that I've been able to have the honor and privilege to help. So what makes me feel radiant nowadays is staying true to who I am as an individual that, um, you know, being a nurse practitioner is a large part of who I am. And I function autonomously in the state that I reside in. Uh, so if I want to write prescriptions, I can do that. Uh, but what I find is more powerful for me is to be able to impact people on a, a larger scale and, and to have the opportunity to um, lecture and uh, do podcasts and do speeches and uh, be able to represent women on, on a larger scale. So what lights me up these days is some of the things I've mentioned, but I love to travel. I love being with my family, although social distancing as an introvert has definitely been uh, interesting finding balance, as I'm sure everyone that's listening is, is striving to find some degree of balance in their personal lives right now. Uh, but I, I think what lights me up is, is feeling that I'm giving to others mm -hmm. and that I'm inspiring others to take care of themselves. And, you know, also connecting with the people in my life that I care about. I always say that I'm, I'm a really like super, I, I always say I'm, I'm very much a cheerleader. Uh, but I also think what makes me feel radiant is honoring the things that are important to me, like sleep and, you know, eating a particular way and making sure I get exercise 
and making sure that my brain is stimulated. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't change irrespective of, of life circumstances. So honoring all of those things. And my, my, one of my greatest joys in life is my love for travel, which normally I, I travel quite a bit. Uh, so I've got some really fun trips that are coming up. And so keeping my fingers crossed as I say that, um, lots of opportunities where I get to see the world. I, I'm just, I'm a wanderluster. I love to learn about new foods and cuisines and people and places. And so those would be the things right now that really light me up. But acknowledging that in social distancing, we sometimes have to, um, you know, put some things on hold. Obviously, I'm not traveling, but there's all sorts of cool resources on the web where you can, um, you know, visually get a sense of what something looks like. You know, the, what's interesting to me is the, the value of technology now in many ways. Um, and I think technology has, is a blessing and a curse is that we have the opportunity to experience things before we get there. So sitting down with my kids and saying, okay, let's dream, let's dream a big trip and let's, you know, do some visualization and uh, let, you know, let's do a video so we can kind of go through that and see what that's about. And so those are the kinds of things right now that really light me up. And obviously connecting with other um, health and wellness entrepreneurs is something that brings me tremendous joy because there's really nothing like being an entrepreneur. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, I love the memes that you see on social media where they, you know, one day you're having a high, the next day is a low, the next day is a high. And that's, you know, being an entrepreneur, it's like every day is completely different. No one, day, even, even in social distancing, and I joke about Groundhog Day, it's like, it's the same day every day. Um, as an entrepreneur, your days are very different. They're never, ever the same. And so for many people that can be gratifying for others, it might be maddening, but it really depends on the individual. I love that you said that you dream with your family. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like we forget to dream. We just mm -hmm. pick up our phone, we start scrolling, we have content at our fingertips and we're not taking the time to dream. And I think that that dreaming, that quietening of our body, mind, spirit energy is such a key aspect to developing radiance and and what lights you up and just really kind of taking yourself out of that, you know, that quote unquote busy mode mm -hmm. and just really being in the present moment with yourself or with your, your loved ones. So I think that's really cool that you dream your trips before you go on them. I think that's sweet. Well, I think it's important because, um, my husband when we met I, is someone that had traveled the world and I have traveled a lot of the world with him. And it was really a priority, especially for me, uh, because uh, like any parent, you want to give your kids opportunities that you didn't have. I didn't leave the United States till I was 25. Uh, and that's okay. You know, if people don't leave the, the U.S. earlier, but for me, it was really important that my boys be able to see the world because it's only when you see the world that you can really appreciate what you have um, and really be very grounded. So, uh, you know, for me, I was saying, let's do a big trip, like either let's go to Africa or we'll go to South America. And so I've got one kid who wants to go to Africa and the other one wants to go to the Galapagos. And so, you know, it, I think the manifesting, you know, in my mind saying this is going to happen. It's not a question of if, but when, you know, when will the time be right to be able to do these trips with them? They've done quite a few um, shorter trips, but I, I hope that they grow up with a, a sense of wonder about the world. I think that's really important. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like to think that, and obviously, let me be clear, not everyone loves traveling like I do. I, I really do. And at least one of two of my kids does as well. Uh, but it inspires you to live your life a little differently when you want to explore and have fun. Mm -hmm. And find areas of the world that you feel really drawn to and go there and mm -hmm. just see how you feel. And I love doing that. Absolutely. So last year you experienced a mega health crisis. Mm -hmm. You literally almost died. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at you that mm -hmm. you went through such a, you know, physical, emotional, you know, trauma. Mm -hmm. You look so amazing. <laughs> and <laughs> well, it's, it's been over a year, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. But I know that, um, you know, we look after ourselves. It's mm -hmm. no, it's no secret that we're into proactive aging, rejuvenation, medical grade skincare, all that stuff, mm -hmm. getting treatments done. But I have a feeling that you probably, you know, 
might not have gone through that and, you know, be able to get on stage and do your TED talk like literally weeks Mm -hmm. after getting discharged. If you, you know, hadn't really had your self-care practices down Mm -hmm. and done a little bit of the heavy lifting in your earlier, earlier years. So what's your take on sort of like preventative aging strategies? And then Mm -hmm. as we shift into like our 40s, 50s, 60s, when we're starting to really see the first signs of aging. Mm -hmm. How do you like to approach that? Because obviously you are just like a spokes model woman. (laughs) You're you're very nice. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I think that, uh, you know, how we choose to live our lives can have an enormous impact on how well we bounce back after adversity, whether it's physical, emotional, or otherwise. And I think my my mindset has always been, to take care of myself and, and taking care of myself means honoring what's important to me and should be for many people if they're, they're, you know, hearing some of these things. And so, you know, being a scientist, being a nurse, being a nurse practitioner, it was very clear to me when I looked at my patient population, who was doing well as mm-hmm. they were getting older and who wasn't. And so I think it starts with mindset. I think our mindset is absolutely critical. I am a feisty even though I might not look like it, I'm a feisty, (laughs) a tiny but mighty person. So, you know, I've always had a very strong sense of what I want and what I don't want in my life. And I'm, I can be a little ruthless about it uh, in a very healthy way. I want to be clear about that. Uh, So I, I would say first and foremost, mindset is key to everything. And that may sound very woo to some people. No, no, no. Just so you know, this podcast is like all of so. Oh, good. Okay. Because sometimes <laughs> I say that and people go, what? what no, no. I don't know what that is. Go for um, it. But mindset is everything. You know, when I was in that hospital bed, when I recognized how sick I was, you know, and I remember saying on day five was the day I allowed myself to have a bad day emotionally. I cried. I felt sorry for myself, visited by spirit, given a choice. The, cho- the choice was to live. And if I was living, I was going to fight hard because mm. uh, my kids were way too young not to have their mom. And then on the other side of me, it was like, you know what, if I'm going to live, I'm going to be big and bold because most people under those circumstances, 13 days in the hospital, losing all that weight and being so sick would have given up the opportunity that I had to do this second talk. And so part of my mental recovery and my surgeon who was amazing was very supportive of this, although I know she thought I was crazy, was I wanted to be cleared, meaning it was safe for me to travel. And so that whole, the whole first two weeks I was home, I was like a lump on a, I mean, I literally, all I did was lay around. I was like a lump on a log. I did nothing. And the whole time I was like, I'm going to do this talk. It's like the little engine that could. So I was Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do this talk. I'm going to do this talk. I hadn't even thought about the talk, hadn't written it because I'd gotten sick. (laughs) So I had the two weeks I was supposed to have everything ready. There was no way it was going to be ready. And, and this so, talk was a massive TED talk. Yes. And so I remember uh, the organizers were genuinely concerned because they, they, they knew because I had had my husband reach out to them and explain why I had, why I'd missed all my deadlines. Uh, and they said, we would be willing to have a meeting. We want to make sure you're not going to compromise your recovery. And they told me when they saw me and when I said to them, the two things that kept me going in that hospital was getting home to my kids and doing this talk. And they said, we didn't want to tell you no. We're like, if she can get up on, you know, like on zoom and have this conversation with us and sounds coherent, we're going to let her do it. And so I spent two weeks lying around and then two weeks preparing for my talk. And I flew down with my youngest and did it and thought nothing more of it. I was just grateful I had done it. I was like, my brain is still working. This is great. But when it comes to um, healthy aging, I, I think, First, as I said before, first and foremost, mindset is everything because that has guided me well throughout my lifetime. I believe that you have to be surrounded by individuals that support and love you for who you are. I can't imagine being in an environment where I didn't have loved ones and close friends that didn't allow me to be who I am Mm -hmm. and not feel judged and uh, supported. But I also think it's the little things that we do every day for ourselves. You know, part of me taking care of myself is getting enough sleep. I know that we kind of touched on this um, yesterday when we were chatting that sleep is foundational to our health. And so part of how I honor my body and how I know that my brain works better, like I could get away in my 20s and 30s with not enough sleep easily. 
It doesn't happen in your 40s. That's a whole lot harder. You don't get a good night's sleep and your whole day is kind of off. Mm. And it's because there are so many restorative properties to sleep, this whole glymphatic system and you know, secretion of growth hormone and all these amazing things that go on, all these reparative processes that go on at night. So sleep is number one. Um, you know, hydrating my body as much as possible. I can tell if I've been doing a lot of recordings or a lot of podcast tapings, I'm like, my mouth is so dry. And it's like, then I go to bed and I'm thirsty and it starts this vicious cycle, but our cells need hydration. So mm -hmm. drinking water, I don't, this is probably going to sound weird. I don't drink coffee and I really don't drink tea very often. Um, so it's, I really do concentrate on drinking a lot of water throughout the day and then honoring my body with really nourishing foods. I've been gluten-free for almost 10 years, and I helped reverse an autoimmune disorder by that. And over the last three years, I've been dairy and grains-free. And I know that doesn't sound super sexy to anyone that's listening, but I have found for women that once we get above like late 30s, early 40s, a lot of those foods are highly inflammatory and don't serve us well. Yeah. And I really limit my alcohol. I have never been a big drinker. I have an alcoholic parent. And so growing up with an alcoholic parent, part of my healing from that was acknowledging that alcohol doesn't really serve me. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't mean I don't occasionally have a glass of wine or a martini, but it's not something I engage in on a regular basis. So, you know, pulling those things out of my diet really means that I really concentrate on high quality protein, healthy fats, and non-starchy vegetables. I do eat some sweet potato. I do have some root vegetables, just not a whole lot and not very often. And I am someone that is a voracious reader. So I have probably at one at any one time I have 10 books on Audible. Not that I'm listening to all at the same time. I love to learn. So throughout the day, I right now while social distancing, I'm doing an I'm doing a three or four mile walk with my dogs every day. I do HIT or Tabata training or TRX training at my home. Usually I'm lifting weights in the gym, but I'm not able to do that. And when I'm not social distancing, I do spend quite a bit of time on self-care and that could be meditation, that could be gratitude journaling, um, that could be, you know, connecting. I do Reiki work. Um, I have a wonderful of woman. Course you do. <laughs> yeah, a wonderful, wonderful woman locally that I work with. In fact, she just sent me a message the other day and said, you know, even while social distancing, we can be doing our work. And I was like, you're right. Uh, but I, I think that there's there's value in connecting mind, body, spirit. Um, I'm not at all ashamed to say that I like a good blowout and I'm, I like a good massage and those things make me feel really good, but they're also very healing for me. They're also mm -hmm. things that bring me joy. And I think that's really important. I, I think that we have to really be honest with ourselves that there's no shame in saying I get a blowout. And obviously I'm not getting blowouts right now, but <laughs> I can tell you it's one of the things I probably miss the most is getting a good blowout. Um, and maybe getting some highlights, but it, I think part of aging well is that. And then also, you know, for me, there's never any shame with, um, you know, doing treatments. Uh, you know, I, I do Botox a few times a year. I do Profractional once a year. Um, I use medical grade, um, you know, high quality skincare, and it allows me to feel my best. And you know, there's a lot of what I perceive to be shaming. It's almost as if um, people are, are equally curious about what other people do to stay and look and feel good, but they also like to judge. And so I remind people what's right for me may not be right for someone else. And that doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just, we're all individuals. And, you know, some people are comfortable going the full gamut, full court press and other people are not. And, and we have to respect that. So I think being transparent about the things that I do can maybe people maybe give people the opportunity to acknowledge that you know genetics and our lifestyles play a role but there's also little things that we can do that can continue to you know allow us to look our very best irrespective of what you know birthday we're celebrating you know in that given year and and I don't mind telling people I'm closer to 50 than I am to 40 now and I actually feel like my 40s have been the best decade of my life because in so many ways, I found my voice. I'm true to who I am. I don't apologize for who I am. And I don't think we should have to apologize for you know, our belief systems, um, provided that they're not entirely you know, way out there. 
but I think that we have to honor the, the individuals that we, we were, you know, designed to be. And part of that voice is, you know, speaking our truth so that other people can learn and be inspired. There's nothing worse than if a woman feels like she can't speak her truth or, or be mm. consistent with, with who she is as an individual. Unfortunately, I think there are many people who either live in shame, um, feel ashamed of, of how they feel, or feel as if they cannot be empowered to actually use their voice. And so I, I especially go back to my nursing training and my medical training. We are designed to be educators. Uh, we are designed to um, inspire and empower our patients uh, and our clients. And I think that's really critical. And, and I, never, I would never want my boys, because uh, I have all boys, I would never want them not to have an example of a strong, confident woman as their mom. And I'm also very transparent. My, uh, my 12 year old laughs. He thinks it's funny. He said, you know, mom does Botox. And I was like, that's right. Mom does Botox and that's okay. And so, you know, kind of, he's like, okay, he processes that and then moves on. Uh, but I live in a part of the country where people oftentimes don't talk about these things. And yet when I go to parties, I can tell people are doing exactly these things. And so I, I'm a, I'm a believer in taking the stigma away from taking care of yourself. Cause that's, I mean, it's silly. It's like, why should that be any different than saying, I'm going to go lift weights at the gym or I'm going to go to bed earlier. And in my house, I go to bed earlier than everyone else. I'm not embarrassed to say that either. Mm -hmm. But I also have another layer to add to that. The fact that we do look after ourselves mm -hmm. is actually really important because mm -hmm. you and I, Cynthia, we share the same skin type. We mm -hmm. are what you would consider Fitzpatrick skin type too. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of melanin in our skin. So when we go into the sun, we burn really easily mm -hmm. and we don't have that innate melanin protection mm -hmm. that uh, other darker skin types have. And so we really have to look after ourselves so that we feed our skin with really great uh, antioxidants and peptides in our, in our serums and moisturizers. And then we're protecting our skin against the UVA, UVB and blue light because we're very susceptible to precancerous mm -hmm. and skin cancer lesions. And so it's not necessarily just a matter of, you know, looking at, looking after the skin in a superficial way, mm -hmm. but it's actually for health reasons as mm -hmm. well. So I don't know, I think that's pretty cool being able to look after the health of your skin and yes. then get more beautiful, glowing, radiant skin in the process. It's, I think it's, it's great. And we all do things. We all, you know, mm -hmm. so many of us wear our makeup, we get our hair done. So I think it's really important just to take that stigma away of getting rejuvenation procedures. The bottom line is doing things that are in alignment with you mm -hmm. and what feels good for you. If you're not mm -hmm. feeling well, you shouldn't have a procedure done, right? right? And just only ever do things when you're feeling great and always follow the guidance of, you know, your physician mm -hmm. or your nurse that you're seeing for these types of things. But when I started chatting with you, Cynthia, and we were kind of being a little bit, of, a little bit candid uh, pre-recording here yesterday, you know, we're doing a lot of the same things ourselves. Like you're really dialed in with using the, the best technologies out mm -hmm. there right now. So I was really happy to hear that. And so when I did a, a little bit of a mini console for you, I'm like, oh, check, 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 girl, you are on it. You're set. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I think it's, I think it's important. Um, I think it's important for women to have these conversations with one another because there is this uh, kind of unrealistic expectation, you know, whether it's people in Hollywood or print ads or just people you see around, you know, just around your home. Um, people just don't talk about this. And, and so much like, you know, the conversation we're having yesterday, don't you want to feel like you're having a conversation with a, with a good friend, a good trusted friend and, and feeling like your concerns are being, uh, you know, addressed and acknowledged and um, coming from a place of education and just acknowledging that, you know, we want to be healthy from the inside out. That's really this, what we're stressing. And I think what makes you unique um, you know, in a, in a sea of aesthetic professionals is that you are so thorough and, um, you know, wanting to make sure that your patients are happy, um, not just superficially, but, you know, really diving in deep and doing the, the deeper work because it's easy. Let's be honest. 
it's easy if we want to just focus on the aesthetics. The internal work is much harder to oh, do, yeah. but it is so, so critical to, um, you know, lifelong acceptance of who we are as individuals. And I was telling someone the other day that, you know, my parents went through an ugly divorce when I was younger and it took many years of therapy to get to a, a very healthy place in my life. And I said, I always think there will be some degree of therapeutic communication in my life, therapeutic modalities, because for me, I acknowledge I have to talk about it to get it out and process mm -hmm. and then be able to work on, okay, so it's almost like we're planting a garden. It's like, okay, let's pull out all the weeds, let's fertilize really well, and then we can go back to planting, planting good things. And so I was just telling one of my children, I have a 14-year-old as well, that I think therapy on, on so many levels, which can be so many different things, is so critical for keeping us in our parasympathetic nervous system, yeah. rest and repose, because we're such a sympathetic dominant culture. Mm -hmm. It's instant gratification, dopamine surge, dopamine surge, check my phone, get in front of the computer, get in front of my laptop, you know, be on the phone. I mean, we're just so inundated all day long that I just know that I'm at my best when I'm geared down, when I'm, you know, more focused on you know, substance, when I'm relaxed and calm, and it's a much better place for me to be in. Um, even before I do my own podcasts, um, I do work to ensure that I'm not, you know, rushing around the house and then sitting right in front of my computer to jump on a podcast. It's like, that's not when I'm at my best. So, mm -hmm. you know, making sure we're cultivating little rituals in our lives that keep us connected to that rest and repose side of our brains is really, really important. It's how we're intended to be actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just forgotten because of our modern day culture. And I love what you are an expert in, which is intermittent fasting. And mm -hmm. that's definitely something that I do. I try and eat like a, a you know, a pretty decent supper. Mm -hmm. And then I go till, you know, 11 or 12 the next day. Mm -hmm. So I'm really giving my gut a chance to mm -hmm. repair itself. And we're going to be wrapping up here with Cynthia sharing one of her free resources, because mm -hmm. if you haven't looked into intermittent fasting, this is definitely something that I suggest you look into because it's a highly reparative, regenerative mm -hmm. way at eating with not eating, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So Cynthia, where can people find you and get your intermittent fasting guide? Um, off of my website. So it's www.cynthia. So it's C-Y-N-T-H-I-A Thurlow, T-H-U-R-L-O-W.com. Lots of free resources. And um, that's where all of the FAQs on intermittent fasting, as well as the link to my TED talk. Um, I'm also on social media. So Instagram, it's Cynthia underscore Thurlow underscore on Twitter, which is underscore Cynthia Thurlow. This is what happens when you change your business name back to your given name. And then it's, you know, people have already taken that name. We have actually a Facebook group. It's a free Facebook group on um, it's intermittent fasting lifestyle backslash Cynthia Thurlow, which you're more than welcome to request uh, to be in. And I do giveaways and um, it's actually a great place for me to get uh, a sense of where people are stuck when it comes to intermittent fasting or just, just in general lifestyle related questions. So it's a really great kind of resource for me to see what is um, giving people the most concerns and questions. Mm -hmm. Having a healthy relationship with, with food uh, is very important because obviously that's what fuels our body, right? So I'd love it if you would show a little love to Cynthia and myself. You can tag me at Rachel Varga Official and at my new account at Unlock Your Vitality and Cynthia. Our links are going to be in the description box below. If you haven't had a chance to download my free treatment planning guide and I've just added in this really awesome sophisticated skin cheat sheet where I'm basically sharing some of my five best skin tips. Uh, just register for that at unlockyourvitality.com or also on my personal site at rachelvarga.ca. And it would be my honor to, my, my pleasure, my privilege to help you guide, you know, be your guide towards optimizing your body, mind, spirit, energy, and radiance beauty practices. They're really all from the inside out. It's not the other way around. This work with beauty and radiance, the more I dive into what it truly is, 
it's a lot less superficial than you might think. Mm -hmm. And I have some really incredible um, projects coming down the pipeline, interviews, articles, collaborations, just really wanting to do all of this in a really conscious way where, you know, I'm supporting different um, businesses and practices and products that really care about our community and ways that we can consciously give back to our communities in for populations who are underserved. Mm -hmm. And so just in case you don't know that about me, I just really wanted to share that. So thank you so much for joining us today, Cynthia. It was a pleasure having you on the Rachel Varga podcast and here on the ET channel too. Thanks so much for having me. It's really been a pleasure two days with you. It's wonderful. I know. What a treat. Thanks everyone for joining and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.